Welcome to another video. This is an Olympiad problem from 1973. And all it's asking for is the solution to this system of equations. And all the solutions could be real or complex. Now, if you just drop your pen and pay attention to the system of equations and you try to plug in the easiest numbers possible. We know zero wouldn't work, but if you plug in one for everything, it looks like one works. If x equals one, y equals one, z equals one, it is true for all three equations. You just close your book and walk away. The problem is they want us to find all roots real or complex. Now, you're not sure if that's the only solution, and this is an Olympiad problem, so it would be dangerous for you to just say the answer is one, one, one. So we don't want to take the dangerous path. We want to show that we know what we're doing. Let's get into the video. So as usual, Whenever you have this symmetric type of equations, you, you want to write one equation in terms of the other or do some smart substitution. But at this point, it doesn't look like a good substitution can happen for me. So what I can do is try to generate the second equation from the first one by squaring the first. I know that when I square this, I won't get this. I'll just get a form of it. So I'm going to do all the rough work on this side and then we're going to keep building from this side. So let's square the first equation. We know that x plus y plus z, when we square it, well, if you multiply this out, I don't want to spend a lot of time on it, you just multiply this out, what you're going to get will be x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus 2 times the pairwise product, which is going to be xy plus xz plus yz. That's what you're going to get when you multiply this out. You're going to get xy twice, you're going to get xz twice, and you're going to get yz twice. You just put them together and you get this beautiful thing. However, this is what we want. That's the gem of the equation because that's what we don't see here. So any new thing that shows up, just give it a character, okay? Just give it some reputation make it respectable, okay? So uh, this is the pairwise sum, so it is okay for me to call this, let's call this, we already have a sum, okay? Let's call this S1. Let's call this S2. We will not have need for the sum of the squares, so we don't need to give it a special character because it already has a name because this is not going to show up again. I know what's going to show up. This guy is going to show up. This guy is going to show up again. So let's just give them those two names. And, um, but we know that this is equal to x plus y plus z is given as 3. So we can say that this is 3 squared. Let's figure this out first. So this is 3 squared equals, we, we're given this one to be 3 plus. Let's figure this out. We're going to name them later. And then this is going to be 2 times, oh, we don't have a name for it. Okay, so that's how we call it. Let me call it S2 because it's the pairwise multiplication. Okay, um, so what do we have? We have 9 equals 3 plus 2 times S2. So that we have, um, this is going to be 6 equals 2 S2. So that S2 will be equal to 3. So whenever we see this after we, as we keep going, we must recognize that it is equal to 3, and we don't have to think about how to simplify it, okay? So, let's go here and start talking. Let um, S1 be equal to, that is the first sum of all of these um, solutions, will be x plus y, or we can call them the roots, because they make it valid, x plus y plus z, and it's equal to, what did we say it was? It's here, 3. Okay, let S2 be xy plus xz plus yz. And we just got the answer also to be 3. 
Huh. So, because those are ingredients that we need and we already found this. Is there another form we need? Well, let's see. Now, I want to try to generate the third equation from the first one. So I can cube this in order to get this. That's a good way to go. Or I can multiply this by this so that I can generate x cubed, y cubed, and z cubed. Other things are going to show up and then we're going to give it a name to if it is different from what we have. So let's try to generate x cubed from the product of these first two. Yes, because x is going to multiply this and give us x cubed and this will multiply this, give us y cubed. Other things will show up, but we'll take care of it. In order to generate my x cubed, y cubed, z cubed, I can do this multiplication. Now, if I multiply this, this multiplied by this, according to the equations we have, is going to be equal to 9. But the actual multiplication is going to give me something like this. If you multiply this by this, you're going to get x cubed. You see that? So if I continue, at the end of this multiplication, this multiplies this, this multiplies this, multiplies this. Let's do that first. y cubed plus z cubed plus this is going to multiply this and also multiply this, right? So what we're going to get would be xy squared plus xz squared plus, I should continue multiplying, but I'm going to do something just to save time and space. I will not be able to factor this so that it provides me with anything you see on the board. In order to make my factoring possible or easy, I'm going to bring in some mercenary um, terms or expressions, okay? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring in something that contains x, y, and z. And the easiest thing to find on the market these days would be x, y, z. But me adding it to this expression has caused trouble, right? So what I can do is Subtract it, right? Subtract it. Or go add it to the other side. I'm just going to subtract it immediately. Minus x, y, z. So I have not changed anything. Let's continue the multiplication. So the next thing, you see, I've done x to multiply these two. Now I'm going to take y. I already recorded this. So to multiply these two, so we're going to have plus um, y times x squared is going to be x squared y. So we have x squared y. Let me just multiply everything up first and then I'll do the mercenary action at the end of the day. x squared y plus this times this will be y z squared plus and then I have z times x squared that's x squared z and then I have z times y squared is going to be plus y squared z. So that is what this is equal to. By the way, let's just say this is equal to 9. I think it makes it a lot easier that way. Now, I want to start factoring. The reason why factoring is hard here is because I have just six terms. I need these guys. I already have them. Okay, I know this is going to be 3. So I might as well just write this as 3 plus Okay, this is 3. Now, these guys, I would need them to make life easy, but this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and you have three different variables, unless you can find pairs that would generate, no, no nothing is generating. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to pair every term that contains x and y, x, y. So this has x, y, this has x, y. There is no other term containing x, y. So what I'm going to do is bring in the mercenaries now with x, y. So I'm going to have x, y squared plus here, x squared, y. Then I'm going to bring in plus x, y, z. But I'm going to subtract x, y, z from this or I can add x, y, z to the other side. Okay, so let's just say I'm going to add x, y, z to the other side. Let me put it here. Um, equals 9 plus x, y, z. So the z is because I did this. 
So now I'm gonna go to, I've done X, Y, now I wanna do um, X, Z. So I'm gonna say plus X, Z. Is it X, Z, where is it? Where is the one with X and Z? X, Z squared plus X squared Z plus X, Y, Z. So I just added another X, Y, Z. I'm just gonna wait. So there'll be three of them because I'm gonna do the same thing for Y. So I have taken care of this. I've taken care of this. I've taken care of this. I need Y, Z squared plus Y, Z squared plus, what's the other one? Y squared Z, Y squared Z plus the third X, Y, Z. I had to do this here. Okay, now let's do the factoring. I'm just gonna show you what I do for the case of X and it's true for the other ones. If we put these three together, you have three plus, take out X, Y. What you have left is gonna be Y plus X plus Z. You see, this is X, Y, Z, right? The same thing is gonna happen when you go here. It's going to be, what would you take out X, Z? And what's left is going to be x plus y plus z. Plus, if you go here, you take out y, z. What's left is going to be x plus y plus z. Okay? And on the right-hand side, we have 9 plus 3 x, y, z. That's, that's all I was trying to do. Because with this, we're almost done. Because this was the toughest part of this exercise, you being able to factor this and get factors that look like the ingredients that you already have. So here I have three, I can take out x plus y plus z. So look, this looks like this, three plus, if I take out y plus x plus z, if I factor this out, I'm gonna have xy plus xz plus yz. And that's this guy. Do you see that? And this is equal to 9 plus 3x, y, z. So what is it that I don't know on the board? I know this guy. This is 3. So this is 3 plus 3 times. Do I know this guy? Yeah, it's 3 also. Is equal to 9 plus. Oh, that's the guy I don't know. The mercenaries, we don't know. They're going to be very important in this battle. Okay, so you have X, Y, Z. So how do we solve for X, Y, Z? 3 plus 9 equals 9 plus 3 times something. So this must be 1. If you solve this out, it's going to be 12 equals 9 plus 3. Let's name this S3. Okay, let's call this S3. So that means S3, this implies that S3 equals 1, okay? Subtract 9 from both sides, you have 3 equals 3S3, three and then S3 equals 1. At this point, based on what we have on the board, you would know that there's something we're supposed to do. Because now we have the sum of the solutions, the roots, okay? You can, you, you can see that even the beginning of the question it says find all roots. So it means we are supposed to treat x, y, and z as the roots of a certain equation. And we have the pairwise, the sum of the pairwise products also here. We also have the product of the roots here. When you, when you start seeing things like that, you know that Vieta's formula is coming into the picture. Recall. Vieta's formula tells us clearly that if you have a polynomial, a cubic polynomial, well, it has to be cubic in this case, that it's going to be, let's say it's in terms of giant X, or oh, I'm using X, I need to use another letter, let's use the letter T, okay, so T cubed, this is Vieta's formula. So at this point, all I have to do is just plug in the values that I've got because I know what the sum of the roots is. It is this guy, 3. So I got t cubed minus 3t squared 
plus the, the sum of the pairwise products is going to be 3. So I got 3t minus the product of the roots is 1 minus 1 equals 0. And this is actually the binomial expansion of t minus 1. So I've got t minus 1 cubed is equal to 0. Do you know what this means? This means that t minus 1, t minus 1, t minus 1 is equal to 0. And whenever you have a, pro a zero product, it's either this is 0, or this is 0, or this is 0. Remember that all the roots we're looking for are x, y, and z. So just imagine that each of these is, this is x, this is y, and this is z. No, this is x minus 1, y minus 1, z minus 1, and it's going to give you 0. And that's it. So we can say this corresponds to x, this corresponds to y, and this corresponds to z. So that x t minus 1, I mean this t is the t that corresponds, not the actual value, please. <laughs> yeah. So we get x minus 1 equals 0, or y minus 1 equals 0, or z minus 1 is equal to 0. So that x equals 1, y equals 1, z equals 1. Now, I was expecting to get answers that would make me get complex solutions, but even in my head, I had pl played out the complex solution scenario. It would be very hard for a complex number to satisfy this and satisfy this and satisfy this and be positive, because once a number is complex, by the time you square it, you're more likely to get negative numbers and there's no way you're gonna come here. So already I had a feeling that it's gonna be just all real numbers. And we, now we've shown that the only solution we can find based on how we did this, if this is the only way, would be x equals one, y equals one, z equals one. Okay, leave a comment in the comment section. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.